This is One on One. Dr. John Runback is director of the Interventional Institute at Holy Name Medical Center. Good to see you, doctor. Good to see you, Steve. Thanks for having me. Good to have you. Listen, we were talking right before we got on the air. You said so much has changed in your field. Um, help me understand something. Image guidance. I mean, there's so many ways to describe it. Image guidance. I think of MRIs, CT scans, x-rays, ultrasounds. More than that, right? Oh, absolutely. What's the newest ways of, quote, seeing inside the body? Sure. So I'm an interventional radiologist, and by definition that means we do minimally invasive image-guided uh, interventions. Right. And that utilizes a whole range of imaging, but predominantly fluoroscopy, which is you know, live x-ray to guide really microscopic and very small devices and catheters directly to the area where patients may have problems to treat those in a very targeted, focal manner. The idea being to treat the disease, but avoid complications to the rest of the system. These catheters. You've had catheters for a long time. I just want to understand this. Mm -hmm. but, but is the technology continually changing, doctor, so that you see more and, you, and there's less potential to have impact on what's around what you're not looking to see and you definitely don't want to adversely affect? Oh, absolutely. I mean, we've benefited from tremendous advancements in technology over the last decade and two. You know, the advent of you know, increasing miniaturization of devices, nanotechnology, have all been incorporated to the really things that we can do. So we can offer highly specific and targeted therapies much more effectively than we could you know, even a decade ago. Give me an ago. example. Give me an example of, say, 10 years ago. Okay. There's a particular procedure done a certain way because that's the technology available, that's the procedure, that's the protocol. But today, same situation someone is facing, same medical problem dealt with a different way because you have more options. Well, I think you hit the nail on the head there. So, you know, traditionally as interventional radiologists and utilizing minimally invasive image-guided therapies. By the way, you keep saying minimally invasive. Right. So these are alternatives to surgery. These Got are it. things that 10 years ago uh, would have required major operative procedures to cure or treat the patient. Nowadays, we can do these things on an outpatient basis or with a short stay in the hospital, basically working through little puncture holes the size of the tip of a pencil. For example, people used to require a long bypass surgery for, lock, for blockage in the leg arteries. Now we can thread catheters in and we have devices that can open up the artery using a rotor rooter type of thing or delivering drugs on a microscopic level directly into the wall of the blood vessel to keep it open. Or stents that are now far better than they used to be to prop open the blood vessel and restore blood supply. The technology has become so sophisticated that we can now work, particularly in patients with diabetes and foot ulcers, into the arteries below the ankle and into the foot. We couldn't do that just a few short years ago. How many? Oh, even within the last five years, we've had the advent Hold of this on, technology. Hold on, the last five years, you couldn't Absolutely. do it? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, it's very, a very rapidly uh, you know, evolving field. And I'll tell you something else. We actually have developed a skill set, which in many cases now uh, uh, exceeds the technology available to us. The technology is, in some cases, catching up to what we're able to do. You know what's interesting to me? You were just saying, uh, before we got on the air, that you finished your training about 20-ish years ago, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. What happens when you're trained in a certain way, based on a certain medical, clinical methodology, you know, uh, paradigm, because that's what's available, right? Right. As the technology continues to change, how much pressure is there on you and your colleagues, particularly those who had their formal medical training, say 10, 15, 20 years earlier than that to keep up? Well, obviously there's a process of continuing medical education to maintain competency, but I'm actually fortunate in that uh, I work with a group called VIVA, which is Vascular Interventional Advances, which is a national education organization. And it's a small group of physicians with a national presence. So we're actually on the cutting edge of working with companies to develop technology to incorporate techno technology into clinical care, what we call translational uh, medicine. And translational to, medicine. Yeah. Translate that. Yeah, translational basically means from bench to bedside, from you know the development of these things on a purely investigational level through clinical uh, trials to uh, clinical practice. So uh, we do this on a regular basis. And I'll tell you, I, I have the good fortune of being at Holy Name. I was in the city of Columbia for many years in New York Medical College. They recruited that. you over? And they recruited me <laughs> over. And without exaggeration, we have 
technology there and capabilities which far exceed what I had at any of those other major academic medical centers. Really? Because the investment that's been made and the continuing commitment to bringing what we call sort of state of the art or, or edge of the envelope technologies, you know, which are available to the community. It's a little bit of a well kept secret. It's interesting, you know, I, we're not here to flack for Holy Name or anyone else, but the assumption that many make, some make, maybe not as many as before, but if you, quote, want the best, you have to be in New York. Is that getting old? Oh, certainly for what we do it is. You know, I mean, we have the ability to treat complex peripheral vascular disease, complex uh, uh, types of cancer that are non-operative uh, cancers, patients who have deep venous thrombosis or clots in the uh, leg veins, patients with minim minimally invasive methods of restoring fractures in the spine due to osteoporosis, and other things as well, if not better, than can be done in Manhattan. So some things that you are not even able to do at Columbia that yeah, you're able to do now. Yeah. Let, me, let me try this. When did you know? I often ask teachers this question. Mm -hmm. I'll ask lawyers. I'll ask you know, politicians. All, but I, I'm curious about medical professionals like yourself. When did you know? When did you know that you wanted to be a doctor? And then when did you know that you wanted to be this particular kind of doctor? That's an interesting question. I don't know why, but I've always wanted to be a doctor. What, what do you mean always? What's I mean, always? It's actually, unfortunately, my mother passed away about a year ago, and she sent me some nostalgic things she had held on to. And in first grade, she sent me my report card and said, Where, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I wrote, doctor. So I've always wanted to be a doctor. <laughs> um, and there's no doctors in my family, so I'm not quite sure how I arrived no at that. No role model in the family? No, absolutely not. You know, just uh, something that intrigued me. I've always had a sort of scientific uh, interest. With regard to interventional radiology, I had a mentor. I uh, trained at Downstate uh, Medical Center uh, you know, uh, down in uh, Brooklyn, and I wanted to be a surgeon. And there was a gentleman, Sal Scafani, down there, a very you know, preeminent interventional radiologist who was doing traditional surgical things without surgery, using catheters and image guidance. And I said, that's the future. So uh, he was obviously my mentor, and I, I worked with him, did some research with him, and then uh, became an interventional radiologist. You know, it's interesting to me, you obviously, by the way, if you Google the doctor, you'll, you'll see this bear out. You have an international reputation in this field. You are renowned in this field. What responsibility do you feel to do for others what you just said was done for you at a younger time in your career? Right. Well, I feel a huge responsibility. I mean, first of all, like I mentioned, I'm involved with the Viva Group. So we do national education, which culminates in a big national meeting each year uh, in uh, the fall, which is actually held in Las Vegas. We have about 5,000 attendees. But more locally, we have uh, students at all levels, starting from high school right through to medical students and residents who rotate with us on a regular basis. And, you know, I tell them when they come in, my goal is twofold. One, to generate enthusiasm, excitement about what you can do and be as a physician. And secondarily, to understand more about minimally invasive procedures and interventional radiology. Because the bottom line is, we have tremendous capability, and not that many people are really completely aware of what we can do. Well, listen, doctor, we appreciate you being here, sharing not just the clinical side of this and the advances in your field, which are really breathtaking, but also the other side of it, the, the, the passion that you obviously continue to bring to your field and the impact you're having on others going into the field. So thank you for being with us. No. Uh, Dr. John Runbeck, who is um, the director of the Interventional Institute at Holy Name Medical Center. Doctor, thank you for being with us. Thank you very much, Steve. We appreciate it. This is One on One. I'm Steve Adubato. We'll be right back right after this. Thank you, Doctor. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, New Jersey Manufacturers Insurance Group, Auto Insurance, Homeowners Insurance, and Banking under the principle of stewardship. PSE&G, committed to improving New Jersey's economy and strengthening its communities and by the law firm of Gibbons PC. Promotional support provided by NJ Biz, all business, all New Jersey, and by the New Jersey Business and Industry Association and its monthly magazine, New Jersey Business. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. One on One with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System.